New questions are unfolding for investigators now getting their first look inside the crippled MV Dolly cargo ship. The latest goal is piecing together the final frantic moments on board the ship as it careened helplessly out of control and into Baltimore's Key Bridge, causing it to collapse. Six contractors doing pothole repair are now presumed dead. Our thoughts and prayers are with their loved ones whose lives are never going to be the same. The latest discovery, the Dolly's black box. Known as a voyage data recorder, the Dolly's has been recovered and is being analyzed by the National Transportation Safety Board. We've sent that back to our lab to evaluate and begin to develop a timeline of events that led up to the strike on the bridge. Uh, and we hope to have that information to share with the public later today. The recorder captures data like heading, speed, and water depth, as well as the condition of the engines, thrusters, and rudder, but also audio on the ship's bridge, where the crew called for dropping anchor in a last-ditch emergency maneuver. The pilot made all of the right calls in a timely manner, but the, uh, the voice recorder will confirm that. And I think this investigation uh, all of the pieces are in place uh, to have a successful uh, you know, conclusion. The, the real challenge will be, how do you prevent this from happening again? The search for the missing Wednesday, hamstrung by poor weather and heavy rain, deemed too dangerous to continue among the jagged pieces of the bridge in the murky Patapsco River. You could have 20 parts that are suddenly going to change position. Diver could be dead in a matter of seconds and he wouldn't even know it. So we are on a cargo ship about the same size as the Dolly, but we are navigating San Francisco Harbor in this case. Uh, this is all a simulation, but we have a real captain, Captain Morgan McManus, who is uh, going to walk us through possibly what could have happened in a total blackout situation, as you call it, aboard the Dolly. Yes, so we have the, uh, the, a cadet simulating the mate on watch. We have another cadet on the helm. Uh, go left 15, please. And, and the dolly would have lost both propulsion and steering? At a full blackout, they would have lost everything. Full blackout, yes. you call it. Right, so we could run the blackout right now from the control room. So there we go. Alarms will start going off so on the bridge. Alarms. Start getting alarms. The mate on watch is going to try to figure out what the alarm is. The engine room is now calling to tell us what's going on. Bridge, made on watch. And in this situation where you can see the pylon coming and you know it is disaster, can you, can you drop the anchor? What are, what are the, you guys trained for these scenarios? Right. We're gonna, you're going to try to do everything you can to stop from hitting it, whether it's running the engine full astern to take the speed off. We've already come down to almost stop in the water now. Um, and then you would be letting the anchors out. If we couldn't get the speed off the vessel, you can lower both anchors down and have them drag or kedge along the bottom to create resistance to slow the ship down. But for that to work, you need time and you need distance. The captain's going to be dealing with the engine room and, and getting on the phone and figuring out what's so, going on. So, that, so they would be so going over, would, grab engine it. Engine room right. would be the, I, I take it, that's where the real chaos is. That's where be. the real chaos is. So now if they call back and say we have power, the first thing we're going to do is then go emergency full astern to try to stop because it happening. looks like they do establish power just right. before they hit the pilot yes. before they hit the bridge. Right. Billow of smoke comes out. They start trying to go astern, get the speed off. This must have been high anxiety at this point on the bridge trying to deal with this. Oh, and incredibly stressful. Watching that first video clip, when I saw the total power go out on the ship, I, I knew there was a major problem going on. So one other thing we wanted to show you was what it would look like at night. We shot the simulation during the day so we could see everything, but this is much more what it would have looked like for the Dolly in Baltimore Harbor. It complicates things at night, I take it. It does. You have, um, you, you need the bridge dark so you could see the lights outside, but you also have ambient light from the skyline or the terminal coming in. It also, uh, in darkness, you lose some depth perception, which makes it a little challenging to actually judge your distances as well. So it, and it complicates moving around the bridge at night. And this is, you teach at State University, New York, Maritime College. I take it what happened in Baltimore Harbor will be studied for decades. It will. It'll become one of those tragic accidents that we take lessons learned from, and then we apply them to what we're teaching the students of what to do in an emergency on the bridge of a ship. Behemoths of the sea. International trade depends on mammoth vessels like this, container ships, the kind that brought down Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge 
in an instant. Up close, you realize just how huge these ships really are. This container ship here, it's a bit larger than the Dolly. That is the Singaporean owned container ship that brought down the bridge in Baltimore this week. The Dolly was built in 2015 and is 300 meters or 984 feet long, capable of carrying up to 10,000 20 foot shipping containers for a dizzying variety of commercial interests. When you look at international shipping, this is this is kind of the typical case. Here's a Singapore flag vessel with a Singapore company uh, leasing the vessel to a Danish company. The insurance for the cargo is British. The classification society that observes the vessel is Japanese. There have been three deadly incidents recorded aboard ships managed by the Dali's operator Synergy Maritime in the last six years. An accident with a ship elevator killed a crew member in Australia in 2018. In 2019, an officer went missing after having likely fallen overboard in Singapore. And last year, a collision between a Synergy maritime tanker and a dredging ship killed at least one sailor. Meanwhile, in June of 2023, Chilean authorities briefly held the Dolly, reporting a deficiency for unreadable pressure gauges related to propulsion and auxiliary machinery. This is what you want. You want, you know, inspectors to go on board and find issues. And are they corrected? Now, the bigger issue here is going to be, did this ship have certain violations that were causing it to, you know, indicate a, a kind of a habitual problem? Synergy says it's cooperating with U.S. investigators, and a spokesman tells CNN it would be inappropriate to discuss any previous incidents at this time. Singaporean transport officials say the Dali's crew reported a momentary loss of propulsion shortly before it slammed into the bridge in Baltimore. Look at the size of this container ship next to Hong Kong's Stonecutter Bridge. At the time that Francis Scott Key Bridge was constructed in the late 70s, container ships like this simply didn't exist. They were not being built at that size and scale in those days. Just last month, China witnessed a deadly cargo ship collision with a bridge on the Pearl River in the city of Guangzhou. At least five people died as vehicles plunged off the stretch of collapsed bridge. Authorities initially blamed the crew for the accident. Global supply chains rely on these enormous ships to move goods around the world. The Baltimore Bridge disaster may force some to reconsider the size of these ships and the potential damage they can do when things go wrong. Ivan Watson, CNN, in the port of Hong Kong. The port of Baltimore is one of the biggest economic engines for the state. It, it, the impact alone is $191 million a day when that shipping channel is closed. 15,000 jobs depend directly on the port of Baltimore, with more than 100,000 other jobs linked to it. Scott Cowan represents a couple thousand of those workers. So this being blocked is would you say it's a worst case scenario? Oh, it's catastrophic for us. The port handles billions of dollars worth of foreign cargo each year. That includes more cars and trucks than any other U.S. port. It also manages heavy farm machinery, imported sugar, and coal exports. The extent of the impact hinges on how long the channel is closed. There is a, quite a few ships that are stuck in the harbor. There's a bunch of them down at the anchorage, and some ships have been diverted to other ports. Meantime, several cruise lines have to reroute operations out of Baltimore. It was so surreal and, you know, I watched in horror like I'm sure everyone else did. The Carnival legend left on Sunday set to return in one week. Carnival now temporarily moving operations to Norfolk. AAA manager and former police officer Regina Ali is on board. We know that uh, the cruising industry will be impacted out of Baltimore. It's significant. If the channel isn't cleared by the end of next week, Cowan says things could take a turn for the worse. We lost lives, and that's what matters more than anybody's paycheck. But, again, the, Maryland, the whole state of Maryland's economy is hinged on the port of Baltimore.